Okay, uh, so this section, uh, I will talk about some big data and analytics, and I think that um, Claire and Tuma already did some uh, basic introduction about what is big data and what are the analytics method. So here, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper, uh, but it's still not that deep. Uh, so it's still an introduction to all the uh, techniques. So uh, about big data, so why are we talking about big data these days? So uh, like decades ago, uh, we have this data coming from uh, hand collection, uh, coming from ERP system and some uh, legacy systems. So the volume of the data is not, uh, was not so big. But nowadays, we have data coming from different sources like scanner, right? So when you go to supermarket, you buy something, uh, the products uh, get scanned. So the um, retailers know like, what did you buy? Uh, like, what are the products that you usually buy together? And then they can use uh, the information to predict the, uh, what you are going to buy in the future. And we also have e-commerce, like uh, the web, uh, internet. Uh, so uh, like Google or other um, tech companies can analyze your clicks, right? So it's like, okay, Abby searched this query on Google and then she clicked on what web pages and what did she buy, right? Um, so using these uh, technologies, we have a lot of data that can be automatically collected. Um, and not to mention that now we have cell phones, so our mobility data can be collected. So uh, telecom uh, companies can know like where you are and with who. Um, and of course, we have uh, surveillance technologies that can track your, uh, that can take video, right? Uh, security videos, and we also have a giant collection of news videos and also media, social media. Um, and we have emails, and so now we have this uh, surge of data that are available to uh, complement the traditional data. So this is basically the background of the big data, right? We have a surge of available data coming from different sources that can capture different aspects of our lives. So the definition of big data, uh, it's similar to what uh, Tuma and Claire mentioned. We usually um, define big data using three Vs. Uh, volume, uh, which means there's a uh, surge in the quantity of data. Right, we have um, a lot of transactions going on, different, a um, lot of records of uh, your your personal data, and also we have this variety. Basically, means we have different kinds of data. Right, so we have uh, the traditional structured data coming from uh, the accounting systems, but we also have other unstructured data such as textual data. Uh, you can think of tweets or Facebook posts or your Instagram posts. So these are unstructured data. It contains your uh, textual information, the photographs, the, vi uh, the videos. So the variety also changed. And then the velocity means the speed. Uh, so Professor Miklos showed us this slide that a billion Google searches ago was this morning, right? So within uh, a short uh, period of time, we have um, a large uh, amount of data. Uh, so then how big is big? Uh, this is a tricky question because if we uh, think about 100 years ago, then today's spreadsheet, I mean, the data that you can put on a spreadsheet can be defined as big data, right? So the big is really a relative definition. Uh, it, it changes uh, through time. But basically, the big data means the data that is so large that our existing system cannot efficiently process. Uh, so that's, that's considered as big data. So that means today, 
uh, some data that we consider as big data may not be big data uh, 10, uh, 10 years later, right? So here we need to uh, think of big data as a relative definition. And then uh, for accountants, uh, why do we want to care about big data? So we mentioned that, uh, uh, I remember Nelly said, okay, uh, when professor asked what is accounting, what, what are uh, the jobs of accountants, uh, Nelly mentioned, okay, our job is to measure business, right? So traditionally to measure business, you uh, as accountant, you basically get data from the accounting systems, right? You get the general ledger of your company and then you validate the data from different sources like the invoices uh, and other, other uh, like uh, documents. Uh, but today, beyond these uh, accounting data or transactional data, we uh, accountants have access to other types of data. So here, if you look at the equation, so beyond transactions, we have interactions and observations. So what is interaction data? So interactions are basically data about how people and things interact with each other or with the business. Uh, one example can be the customer relationships, right? So if you have a customer relationship management uh, system, you can basically collect, uh, for example, emails relating to uh, uh, that uh, relate to customers and chats, right? Um, and also, uh, let's say uh, if a company has a tweet account, then uh, the interactions with customers using tweets can also be this interaction. Uh, and I know that some companies actually have this social media analytics to predict the sentiments of the customers, right? Uh, are customers leaving positive review on, the, on their account or are they leaving like negative um, reviews? Uh, so those are examples of interactions. And then we have uh, observations. So what, what are observational data? So basically they are data that we can uh, directly obtain from sensors uh, or videos. So it can be uh, data coming from Internet of Things uh, or uh, the uh, security video, right? So there is one example that uh, McKinsey is predicting the sales of a retailer using the uh, security video of the parking lot. So the, uh, the logic is that if more people visit this retail store, uh, then you can see from the parking lot uh, video that you have more cars, right? So then more cars means more sales. Uh, so this is a simple correlation of how uh, we can predict uh, like a traditional type of uh, retailer's revenue using observational data. So that is to say uh, for accountants, actually um, um, beyond transactional data, we can collect other types of data to help us measure the business, right? So this diagram basically summarizes what I just said so we traditionally we have uh, accounting systems, especially the ERP system, and then uh, we expand uh, what data we can collect. Right? We have this customer relationship management data, so that we can collect interaction type of data. And then moving on, we have data that uh, is available from the internet, um, such as the tweets, uh, other social media, right? And then uh, Gradually, the scope is expanding, so uh, there are more types of data that accountants can utilize. And um, accountants need to be aware of what data is available there uh, and what we can do with it. So um, that was for accountants in general, right? Um, but here, this slide is uh, summarized by Professor Denise Applebaum. Uh, actually, we are going to invite her to talk about her uh, research uh, in the uh, July 13th class. 
but she summarized this, uh, the auditor's role. Uh, oh, okay, how auditors can utilize big data. So basically, she uh, mentioned okay, how external auditors can use big data and how internal auditors can use big data. So for external auditors, basically, they can uh, utilize the big data to uh, re-perform uh, client's applications of uh, big data. Okay, so this is to say, uh, for example, um, a cl your client says, okay, we estimate uh, our value of the building as like this, this amount of value, right? And they say we, uh, our analysis is based on, uh, let's say, other sources of information coming from uh, social media or other, other sources. Then the auditors want to validate their assertion, so they want to re-perform this whole procedure using uh, that kind of big data the client uses. Right? So that's one uh, application. The second application is that the auditors can just utilize big data to di directly validate the client's assertion. Uh, and this is similar to what internal auditor, uh, auditors can do. Uh, and uh, so compared to external auditors, uh, internal auditors actually have this benefit of uh, uh, accessing uh, the client's internal data. So basically, internal auditors can use the combination of um, a variety of uh, big data and also the client's internal data to do uh, some validation tests. Uh, so do you know the difference between external auditor and internal auditor? I guess I'm, I may uh, need to explain. So basically, internal auditors are auditors that work in-house of a company, um, but external auditor are uh, basically working from uh, big four to do this standalone validation. Uh, so that's the difference, um, general difference. There are more differences, of course. Okay, I will go through the choices one by one. Thank you, Stanley. So, okay, the first one, the Google search queries. So we basically have consensus that that's a big data, right? Because uh, just in a very short period of time, we can have a lot of uh, search queries. And it's very difficult for the traditional databases to handle this amount of data. Um, second one, yearly revenue data of all US public firms. So I just want to ask, does anyone know how many U.S. public firms today? Uh, uh, there are how many uh, U.S. public firms? Uh, so uh, if you don't know the, the answer, uh, basically it's about 3,000. Uh, so if you consider, okay, 3,000 public firms, yearly revenue, that's just 3,000 entries, right? So it's actually not a large volume of data. And you can easily store that data in a spreadsheet. Uh, number C, tweets generated in one day. Yes, we basically have consensus. Um, and number D, uh, weather patterns around the globe. So weather data is really huge. Um, and uh, I think Professor Miklos actually uh, worked with another, uh, like now a professor in University of San Francisco. They worked on this weather data and they uh, predict the revenue using the weather. And uh, I heard that uh, uh, the weather data is really huge and cannot be processed using uh, like the traditional way. So uh, weather data is considered as the big data. And E, demographic information of all students in Rutgers University. Um, like in my perspective, it's still not considered as uh, big data because uh, uh, you can, easily store that information in a database and deal with it. Um, but uh, but like if you choose either of them, you, you still get credits uh, because as I said, if you have a reason behind it, it's, it's fine. Um, but I think uh, here A and C and D are the, uh, uh, like how do you say, are the closest to the uh, definition of big data that we are uh, aware of uh, in today's uh, based on today's technology. Okay. I, mean, I chose B, but I thought I was under the impression that it was all the transactions for the revenue. 
of each company. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. If you uh, are talking about all the transactions, then yeah, that can be considered as big data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fine. Like, uh, so okay, yeah. So because that's just a easy practice for uh, for us to you know think about what is big data. And as I said, the definition is relative, right? And it depends on what data are you looking at. If you are only talking about the one number yearly revenue, right, for all the firms, then it's not. But if you are talking about all the transactions related to revenue, then that can be. Um, yeah, Nick also mentioned demographic data can be a lot of things. Yeah, so the definition is really relative and it depends on how you uh, like interpret the data that I put in the choices. Okay, so uh, we just uh, learned about the definition of big data and what can be considered as big data. Uh, and we also know that, yes, big data can provide us with a large amount of information, right? But there is uh, uh, one uh, issue with big data, and that is uh, the noise inside big data. So big data is big, but it's also noisy. So can someone explain why big data can be noisy? Like um, before I, you know, uh, introduce why it can be noisy. So when you look at the sentence, why big data can be noisy, what pops into your mind? Just, I was just going to say that. Oh, I was yeah, just going to say so that it can be noisy. It can be noisy because you're pulling from oftentimes a lot of different sources. So the the filters that are applied to the data are usually different. So you have to kind of go through and make sure that they're all filtered the same and they all kind of mean the same thing. So it's a lot of filtering, a lot of um, noise. Right. Yeah, that's a good comment. Uh, Nick, do you want to say something? Yeah, I was thinking um, along the same lines, but also like, you know, data could be in so many different formats mm -hmm. um, and you have to clean it. So right. like it could be like, you know, a spacing issue um, and it could vary across the entire data set. So just cleaning that and getting the information out of it. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good comment. Actually, uh, in big data analytics or just analytics in general, 80 percent of the time uh, is spent on data cleaning. Like you need to transform the data into uh, the type that you can uh, run analysis on. Yeah. So that's a good comment. Uh, Nelly, uh, were you talking about something? Yeah, I was. I was thinking that sometimes noisy it means like a lot of information. Most of it is not relevant, but mm. there is too much information. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's similar to what Adam mentioned, right? You need to uh, make sure that the information that you extract is relevant to the uh, to the question that you are investigating, right? And here, I just want to add another comment. So, uh, for example, we know that, uh, okay, when you guys buy something from Amazon, what do you look at? I mean, uh, besides the functionality of the product and uh, the price, you, you, you also look at the reviews, right? So, uh, so review can, uh, like, although it's not big, but it's a type of uh, external data, like as Professor Miklos mentioned, that we can utilize, right? But this type of data is noisy because you don't know uh, who, like what reviews are authentic reviews, right? Because we know that sometimes the uh, the uh, retailers can, you know, put some fake reviews. So you really don't know uh, what reviews are uh, tr like authentic or fake. So that's also one, uh, one example of why big data can be noisy. Um, and it's also true in uh, in Twitter, right? So we know that there are many tweets that are fake, um, and that's why you know uh, it's it's a noisy world, uh, especially uh, when it comes to you know political campaigns or other uh, other issues, right? So big data can be uh, informative, uh, but it can also be very noisy. 